Here we go with another example right here, and we have p of x, and it is x to the third minus 13x minus 12. And we want to consider this equation such that x plus 1 is a factor. That's your big fat clue. Why is that a big fat clue? Well, if I wanted to factor this, since I am going to be asked to graph it, I cannot do greatest common factor. I cannot do grouping right now. I cannot do... Mm, Sum and difference of cubes, cannot do difference of squares, can't do AC method. Now, are there ways that, to play around with these? Sometimes, yes, but right here, not seeing anything very obvious, but by dividing it by a linear factor, we will get a quadratic uh, quotient. We should get a remainder of zero if we do it correctly, and the quadratic should be factorable by hand to finish the problem, and worst case scenario, we can use quadratic formula. So let's go and get into this. Now, since I'm dividing by x plus 1 to find my quotient, the other factor, or that could be factored further, of course, um, I can use synthetic. I have a linear dividend with a leading coefficient of 1. So we take that x plus 1, and we're going to set it equal to 0, and we get x equals negative 1. Negative 1 in the corner there. 1. Don't forget the placeholder. I bet a lot of you did. 0 negative 13 and negative 12. Lovely. Then we just dive right in. Synthetic division. Bring down that first number all the way to the bottom. Don't forget. And don't try to just remember. If, if you don't remember, look it up. You know, make sure. Don't just keep doing the wrong thing, right? Bottom times box or new coefficient times the divisor. Got negative one. Never been wiser new coefficient times a divisor. Add them straight down. We've never been wiser. New coefficient times a divisor. Add them straight down. Box that one off. It's the last one. Should be our remainder if we're doing everything correctly. So how do we write our answer? Well, this right here just got divided by x plus 1. So that p of x is also equal to the product of x plus 1 and our quotient, which was x squared minus x minus 12. Now you have to factor that. You can use AC method and grouping. I, on the other hand, am going to skip explaining that to you because you're big boys and girls and you should be able to do that at this point in the curriculum. So if you do your factoring, you should get x minus 4 in one parenthesis and x plus 3 in the other. If you did, give yourself a nice pat on the back and a high five. So there we go, fully factored. Funky, zebras, enjoy, pink, marshmallow, goblins. Fully factor first, got it. Zeros with the zero product property, you're next. Set each inner factor equal to zero, x equals negative one, x equals four, and x is ah, negative three. Sorry. Sorry about that. I don't like how that looks. Let's fix it. It's a little squished. Make it very obvious. Negative three. There we go. All right. Got them. And behavior. Well, expanded form positive to an odd. And behavior is down and up. Down on the left, up on the right. Now plot the points on your paper. There we go. Got four. I need negative three and negative one. There we go. Down on this side, up on this side. Okay, looking good. Y-axis, x-axis, crushing it. Here, we have negative 12. That's actually your y-intercept, the constant at the end. It's already in expanded form. Why not take advantage? So I'm not going to plot that yet. I'm going to let the curve organically happen, and then I'm going to label wherever I cross the y-axis, negative 12. If you cross up here, ah, you made a mistake. Got to fix it, right? Um, multiplicity. Well, Lucky for us, they're all one. That means they all behave quite like a linear. They're going to cut through the x-axis pretty straight. And 
graph. Okay, let's go. Cut straight through. It's got to curve around somewhere, but not right at it, right? Turn around, cut straight through. Got to turn around and cut straight through. Lovely. Then I go right over here. That's my y-intercept, and that makes sense to be negative 12. Why? Because it's below the x-axis. It's in the negative area, right? Um, if I cut through up here at the top above the origin, well, that's cause for concern, right? Like, what the heck is going on there? And that's all there is to it. So, hope you are crushing it, doing fantastic, long division. If you need a little more insurance to know that you're doing this correctly, um, I have other playlists called polynomials, called long division, uh, or division of polynomials. I have graphing all over the place. So I have tons of videos. You could definitely explore through those and maybe find something that will help you. And you can, you know, do the example along with me, press pause and, you know, dive right in. Um, I think there's one more though on this playlist that I forgot about. So that <laughs> will be popped up first. And I'll guess you'll see me in the next video. Bye.